If you're going on a Caribbean cruise, something that you should be aware of is that oftentimes things are not as perfect as they seem to be on the cruise line website or in cruise brochures. And as a matter of fact, it is quite possible that you might encounter some common and even some less common Caribbean port scams that you'll want to be aware of. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now we recently came back from a Caribbean cruise and before we got off the ship in one of our cruise ports of call, well, the cruise director did let us all know, all of the passengers, about a little bit of a warning of a common port scam in that specific cruise protocol. Now I actually, even though I knew a lot about different tourist scams, I was not aware of this one. And lo and behold, it was something that we did see when we were in that cruise port. Now I'm gonna share that with you, along with other common and some less common tourist scams that you'll want to be aware of that happens specifically in some Caribbean ports of call. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention two things. Firstly, Caribbean cruises are not dangerous, so I don't make this video to scare anybody, but I do really think that if we are aware of the things that can happen, then we're less likely to fall victim to this and be a target. And secondly, if you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, the ladies with fruit photo scam. Now I'm calling it the ladies with fruit photo scam, but truthfully, it can be any type of photo taking tourist trap. And this can happen also on Mediterranean cruises and other big cities, but it is something that we see in some Caribbean ports of call. Now, in particular, we were in Cartagena on our last cruise and we saw these ladies with fruit on their head dressed up in beautiful colorful costumes and they were going up to different tourists and basically trying to take photos with them sometimes a little bit aggressive is maybe not the right word but assertively and then after that of course people are expected to pay them now if you want to take photos with them then by all means do so. However, I have heard from people in the comments of my videos that said that they were basically photobombed by two ladies with fruits and they were pretty much harassed to give them $20 for that photo, which is more than they probably would have wanted to. If you do want to take photos, there is nothing wrong with that, but maybe ask the people how much is it for a photo or have a few dollars ready for the photo and make sure that that is agreed upon before you are harassed once the photo is taken. Number two, the fake vanilla scam. Now I actually think that this is potentially more serious because I like to think when we're buying products in cruise ports of call, in particular when it has to do with anything that we're going to ingest, so basically any food orientated products, that they are actually the real thing. I don't like the idea of anything potentially being tampered with. Now, something that I have heard, and I have not witnessed it firsthand, but I've definitely seen this mentioned many times in several cruise Facebook groups, including on the Carnival cruise pages, and basically that some people have said that they've purchased, well, fake vanilla. So I guess the idea is that some of the vanilla bottles are filled up with something other than real vanilla. And obviously nobody wants that. Now that is something that I usually do purchase when I'm in Mexico. I purchase little bottles of vanilla because the prices are usually very good. And in the past, I always found the quality to be quite good. In particular, I usually buy it when I am in Cozumel. If you know anything about this and perhaps where this is happening, please do let me know down in the comments below. But my guess is that if you are purchasing uh, vanilla in the shops that are right around the cruise port, like within the cruise port gates, that I think that that is probably the safest place to purchase these things. But if you're purchasing it in a market or off on a side road, I think just like everything, I think that probably just isn't the best idea. Number three, the hats on head tourist scam. Now I have to say a lot of these things I actually witnessed on my last cruise and I found this one particularly annoying. From the moment that we got off our bus in our cruise port of call, well, we were inundated with people trying to put these sun hats on our head and it really, it is very annoying. Now it really wasn't dangerous. So what I can say if you do encounter this is just a no thank you that is pretty firm. Just keep walking pretty quickly, go where you wanna go and don't engage in conversation unless you do wanna buy a hat. If you wanna buy a sun hat, 
by all means buy it. But I have to say, if you could avoid some of those areas that are just inundated with people that are trying to put things on you, whether it's a hat, whether it's a bracelet, basically anything that goes on your body and that you take, it is expected that you buy it and you might have a little bit of a hard time getting out of that situation. So it is always a good idea, unless you really want to purchase something, not to let anybody put anything on your body. Now I do have two more Caribbean cruise port of call scams that really tend to get cruisers, including that one that we were warned about by our cruise director on our last cruise. But I also am going to share at the end of this video, a few sort of bonus tips on things to keep safe and really to avoid being the target of petty theft. Number four, the unreputable taxi scam. Now this is something that I know a lot of people have unfortunately fallen victim to in certain cruise ports of call. But I was recently reading an article in CN Traveler, Condé Nast Traveler. I'll actually leave the article linked down below. But basically where the author of the article explained that she was unfortunately a target of this taxi scam theft. Now what basically happened is they prepaid their taxi before getting back to the cruise port of call. When they got back to the cruise port, they were asked for an additional $80. And of course they had already prepaid it. They did not have a receipt. And when they did arrive at the cruise port of call, instead of arriving where there were a lot of tourists and really in that main area, they were brought to the back of the terminal building where a couple of men were there waiting for them and they basically felt that they had no choice. They gave an additional $80 even though they had already prepaid that taxi. Now that is definitely something that we don't want to happen, but something that they realized is that the taxi that they had hired, they believed they had hired a company that they looked up beforehand, but something that does happen sometimes with companies that even have good reviews, they may actually pass on customers to other people on the island that may not be reputable taxi drivers, which seems to be what happened in this case. Now, if you do take a taxi right from the cruise port, usually you will be okay if you are taking a taxi that is within the cruise terminal because they do have to be licensed usually to be able to get into that cruise terminal gated area. However, if you are looking up reviews and if you are hiring a taxi that even has really great reviews or a local tour operator, just make sure when you do arrive there that it actually is the person with their actual ID. They will usually have a license if they are reputable, make sure that it is the actual person that you're supposed to meet so that you can avoid any of these kinds of situations. And the other thing that you'll want to do is don't prepay your taxi. Even if you're doing something round trip, perhaps pay half and pay the other half later, but don't prepay before you are back at that terminal. Number five, the local wildlife spotter scam. Now this is the scam or the trap that we were warned about when we were going into Costa Rica. And basically the idea of this, we were surprised we did find it quite soon after we left the terminal building. And basically the idea is that local people will let you know that they can show you where there are some animals, some wildlife in the trees. And they might say something as innocent as, hey, look, I see a sloth over there. Do you wanna see where it is? I can show you. Then a tourist follows them and then at that point they point out the sloth in the tree and then they are basically asked for money. Now we did see this happen to other people in a park as we did leave the cruise terminal building in Costa Rica. Now luckily we were warned about this already. This didn't happen to us but another cruise passenger from the other cruise ship did tell us that they were harassed until they finally gave them money. So what can you do to keep safe in your Caribbean cruise ports of call and avoid these kind of issues? Well, basically the biggest issue usually is possibly petty theft. The best way to avoid this is leave any of your good jewelry on the cruise ship. Don't wear anything that is flashy and then bring small bills. So while you can have money with you, have some amount of money for things that you wanna purchase or even for some food, or drinks, but try to bring small bills. So ones, fives, tens, 20, leave your fifties and your hundreds on the cruise ship. And by the way, most cruise ships will allow you to break your change right at the guest services desk. So that's a little tip for you. So you don't have to go off with large bills and get stuck. 
Now it's also a good idea if you are leaving the cruise port in a taxi or on any independent tour is make sure that you do know what cruise port you are actually docked at. In many different Caribbean islands, you'll have more than one port. So you wanna make sure that you know what the name of that port is or even what number you are docked at if you are in a cruise port that has several different ships. And have your cruise ship contact information. You could usually find that information on the daily planners, on some of the maps of the cruise port areas that the cruise ship will give you before you leave the cruise ship. Or sometimes it will also be on your cruise line app or it might even be on your key card. So find that information before you leave that ship, just in case there's ever a reason to contact the ship. It is good information to have. Now, please let me know if you've ever seen or even unfortunately been a victim of any of these Caribbean cruise port of call scams. Please let me know down in the comments below because I know when we share this information, it really does help other people. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.